Hello everybody, Clayton here at eTrailer.com. Here at eTrailer, we install, test, and review a lot of different products to help you as a customer make a more educated decision before your purchase. Today, we're gonna to be working on a 2021 Kia Seltos. We're gonna be taking a look at, and I'll be walking you through how to install the Kurt Class 1 trailer hitch receiver. Now, adding a hitch to the back of your Seltos is gonna be an awesome upgrade. This is going to allow us to use a bike rack. Maybe we're currently putting our bikes on the roof or jamming them into our trunk. This is just going to be a whole lot easier to get them on the back of our vehicle. And not only that, we can make more room for our passengers if we are putting them inside. Then we are going to be able to use a cargo carrier. So maybe we have some extra luggage or coolers or anything like that. We can throw those on the back on that cargo carrier as well. Maybe you want to take your jet skis to the lake. This hitch is going to be able to pull those, no problem. This is what our hitch is going to look like installed. It looks really nice under here. The cross tube is completely concealed. So the only thing you're going to be able to see is that receiver tube opening. So that's going to keep it nice and factory looking while also keeping its nice sporty appearance. Our hitch is going to be a steel construction. So it's going to be nice and strong for a long time. You're not going to have to worry about it. It's also going to have this nice black powder coat finish to help resist rust and corrosion as well. One thing I really do like is going to be this reinforced steel collar. It's going to give it a nice finished look while also adding some stability. Now, with this being a class one, we're going to be pretty limited on our options due to the fact that it's a one and a quarter by one and a quarter inch receiver tube opening. But there are plenty of options available here at eTrailer. We are going to have a half inch pinhole opening. As you can see, our pin fits through there just fine. You want to keep in mind a pin and clip do not come included, but you can find one here at eTrailer. We are going to have the rolled style safety chain loops, so that's going to look really nice. It's going to stick up real tight to our receiver tube. As you can see, our safety chains fit on there with no problem. Now I can get you some measurements to help you understand where this hitch is going to sit on the back of your Seltos. From the ground to the top part of our receiver tube opening is going to be about 13 inches. This number is very important for ground clearance and if you are going to be pulling a trailer you need to know if that ball needs to be in the rise or lower position. And then from the center of our pinhole to the outermost part of our fascia is going to be about 8 inches and that is quite a bit quite a bit of a distance so you want to keep in mind whenever you're selecting any folding accessories that they're not going to fold up and hit the back of your fascia. And as far as our weight capacities are concerned we are going to have a 2,000 pound towing capacity. You want to keep in mind that's going to be the weight of the trailer and the load on the trailer. And we are going to have a 200 pound tongue weight rating. You want to keep in mind that that's going to be pretty limited due to the fact it is a class 1 hitch. So that's probably going to be enough for like two bikes and a rack or anything like that. Maybe a small cargo carrier. And that's going to be at 200 pounds pushing straight down on our receiver tube opening. Now you do need to check with your owner's manual and make sure that your vehicle is capable of towing at those capacities. If it's not, always go with the lowest number between the two. And in terms of installation, getting our hitch installed really isn't too bad. There's no major drilling, cutting, welding, or anything like that. We're really just trimming an underbody panel. It's a bolt-up application. It's most definitely something that you guys could do at home in your driveway. That being said, let's head in the shop and I'll show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to be removing our underbody panel here on the passenger side. We're going to have two pushpin fasteners and a 10 millimeter nut on the top. But we'll start here on the bottom with the fasteners. I'm going to grab a small flat blade screwdriver. We'll come in on the side of that, kind of pry it down. You can just pull that entire clip out with that trim panel tool, or you could probably do it by hand. Here's that 10 millimeter nut we're going to remove. With that out of the way, we can kind of lift up and out on our panel to get it out of the way. Our next step is going to be to lower our exhaust, but before we do that, we need to support it. We're going to do that using a cam buckle strap. If you don't have one, you can find one here at e Trailer. We're going to take one hook, put it through our coil spring. I'll run that to the other side, do the same exact thing, and then we'll just cinch that down up against our exhaust. We now need to remove our rubber isolators. We're going to do this using a pry bar. We just want to grab that, kind of put one side against the muffler, pull out on that exhaust hanger. We'll have one of these on each side. Put that other isolator off. We can then relieve some tension on our strap, lowering our exhaust down. If you go just in front of the subframe before the coil spring, you'll have a rubber plug. We're just gonna use a pick tool and remove that. We're gonna have one on each side. We are now ready to fish wire our hardware. Our access holes are gonna be the, on the outside of our frame rail here. I'm gonna start with this rear hole. We wanna grab that fish wire. We're gonna insert that into that hole, then feed it towards that hole that we remove that plug out of. I always like to start with the farthest, that way we can just get that one done and out of the way. 
you want to make sure to hold on to both ends that way you don't drop it into the frame rail. Then we want to grab our provided spacer block. We're going to slide that over the coiled end. And then we're going to thread on our provided carriage bolt. Again, we want to hold on to this. Then we can grab that tag end, push that up and into the frame rail. And we'll pull that fish wire until our hardware comes out of the hole. Now we'll repeat that same process for these front two and the ones on the other side. Before we raise our hitch into position, we need to push our hardware back into the frame rail. That way we can actually get our hitch up and on the side of the frame rail without interference. Now with an extra set of hands, we want to raise our hitch into position. We're going to take those fish wires and put them through the according holes in our hitches. With those fish wires pulled through, we can lift our hitch up, slowly pulling our pull wires through. Once you get one through, you'll just want to pull that pull wire off and then get your flange nut started. I suggest grabbing a long flat blade screwdriver, really anything you can fit between the hitch and the frame rail to help hold that bolt. Then when I get that coil wire off there, you can either pull it off or unthread it. And with that bolt poking through, we can grab that flange nut. And we just want to carefully get that started. You definitely want to take your time with this. You want to make sure not to drop that hardware back into the frame rail. With that bolt started, we can remove our pick and repeat that same process on the other side. We can then grab a 17 millimeter socket and just snug down our hardware. We can then come back and torque everything down to the amount specified in our instructions. Now we're going to lift our exhaust back up into place. So we'll just slide those hangers back on. And once you get those hangers back on, you can remove that cam buckle strap. Then you can put these plugs back in your frame row if you'd like. We now need to trim out our lower body panel according to our instructions. I kind of marked out the area already. I'm going to go about two inches deep and about three inches long. We're just going to use some tin snips to get this trimmed. Then you can also use a pocket knife to trim that off if you have to. The plastic isn't very thick. Now with our panel trimmed out, we can reinstall it in the reverse order we took it apart. And you don't want to forget to reinstall that 10 millimeter nut. And we are now ready to hit the road. That's going to do it for our look at and our installation of Kurtz Class 1 Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2021 Kia Seltos.